In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. May dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. All together, I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that they I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what they have done and in what they have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Human knowledge is limited, especially in regard to discovering God's will and plan. The Church ought to pray for the spirit of wisdom, which is God's gift. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord's Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the hurt and shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel? except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high. And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul sends back to Philemon, his runaway slave, Onesimus, but asked the Christian's master to treat the servant as a brother. The salvation of Christ eliminates the division between the slave and the free, the poor and the rich. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you in behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me in your behalf, 
in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. Beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you with me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your laws. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king, advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. May dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. It is very clear in today's Gospel, it's all about discipleship. Ang pagsunod sa ating Painong Jesus. Kinakausap niya mga taong sumusunod sa Kanya. Marahil ito yung mga taong nakikinig sa kanya, asa kasama siya sa paglalakad, sa pagbabahagi ng mabuting balita. Kaya at this time, dumating yung punto na kinakailangan niya maging seryosong kausapin ng mga to. Well, marahil nung simula natutuwa siya sapagkat dumadami ang sumusunod sa kanya. Marami nakikinig sa kanya but this time, he's trying to make the point so clear to them that if you want truly to follow me, as he said, then these are the things that you have to do. Medyo nakakagulat po, no? Medyo may mga salitang hindi po ganun kaaya-aya ang nabanggit sa Ibanghelyo. The first thing the Gospel mentioned about hating. Kung gusto mong sumunod sa Diyos, Sabi ni Jesus, kung gusto niyo sumunod sa akin, the first thing you do is to hate your mother, your father, your family, to be specific. But my dear friends, let us be mindful of the context. Bago natin unawain ang Ibanghelyo, dapat alamin natin yung konteksto ng mga wikang ito. When we talk about hate, 
to hate at it's not really at that time yung kung titingnan natin yung konteksto hindi po yung tipo magipag-away ka talaga it's just a matter of giving a lesser way of loving ibig sabihin pinaparating dito na dapat kung gusto mong sumunod sa Diyos eh dapat yung angat sa pag-ibig mo angat dapat ang Diyos kaysa kahit kanino maski sa pamilya ito yung hamon sabi ko nga po pinupunto na ni Jesus dito siniseryoso na kumbaga kung tayo nakipag-usap sa kabataan sa anak natin ito yung punto na talagang tatanungin mo ano ba talaga ako nga po mismo ako po'y assigned sa seminaryo yun mismo yung dumating na darating sa punto na tatanungin ko talaga ano ba talaga gusto mo bang magpatuloy o hindi So ito yung konteksto ng Ibanghelyo. Kaya nga, medyo malalim ang mga challenges. The first one, it all talks about your love. And Jesus is trying to tell them that your love must be above all things. Must be God. Kahit po sa pamilya. And that's the real sense of this first part. The second thing is about carrying of the cross. Well, marahil alam natin anong ibig sabihin nito. The willingness, total submission, the willingness to, to sacrifice, to give up everything. Ito naman yung third point. It's all about giving up of material things. Well, the context is this one. Take note, sila po ay papunta sa Jerusalem. They are on their way to Jerusalem. And we know that for a fact, na kapag Jerusalem ang pinag-uusapan, dadaan sila sa matinding pagsubok. Ito na yung huling paglalakbay ni Jesus. Alam niya na pagpunta niya sa Jerusalem, ito na. Talagang tunay na pagsubok na. Ito na. Kamatayan na ang haharapin niya. And so, he is trying to challenge them. If you really want to join me going to Jerusalem, then dapat yung disposition, yung motivation buo na. The willingness to carry the cross. The willingness to accept sacrifices for the sake of God. And the willingness to give up everything, all possessions, simply for the sake of God. And even our loved ones. Kaya ang pinupunto ng Ibanghelyo natin ngayon is about the motivation, the intention, the conviction, ito yung punto mismo ng ating ibanghelyo. At itong maganda ka Jesus, kapag nga naisin ka niya, na sumunod sa kanya, talagang tutumbukin niya yung intention. Talagang pupuntahan niya yung, yung motivation mo. It's a challenge ka niya talaga. Parang sa buhay pagpapari yan eh. Kung akala nyo, pagpasok namin, ganun na kabilis. Kung akala nyo, pagpasok namin sa, sina- sa seminaryo, bihis agad kami ng ganito. Ganun lang agad, in the name of Father agad. Nako, alam nyo lang, matinding pagsubok ang dadaanan namin. Meron tayong dito mga dalawang seminarista. Tanungin nyo yan. Nako, ngayon, sila ang stage nila ngayon. Ito yung stage na wala lahat. Bawal lahat. Nandito man sila sa labas, pero hanggang tingin lang yan. Ito yung stage na kinakailangan nilang dumaan sa parang kinukulong sila. Enclosure, kumbaga. Walang cellphone, walang TV, walang radio. Walang ang pera mga yan. Wala lahat. Talagang tutumbukin yung tunay na conviction. Tunay na motivation. Sapagkat, Totoo nga naman, kapag buo ang motivation, kapag buo talaga ang iyong desisyon, aba, kahit anong pagsubok pa ang dadaanan mo, buo pa rin ang pagsunod mo sa Diyos. And this is really a good reminder for all of us. Hindi lang naman pagsunod sa Diyos eh. Even in our daily undertakings, oh, sige nga, ano bang estado meron ka ngayon? May asawa ka? 
eh, dapat buo din yung motivation mo sa pagiging ama. Dapat buo din yung motivation mo sa pagiging ina. O kung sakaling ikaw wala pang asawa, isang anak, estudyante, nag-aaral ka, dapat buo rin ito. Kasi pagkat, pag hindi buo yan, naku, walang patutunguhan yan. Kaya ito yung madalas na nakakalungkot sa mga kabataan ngayon. Sagana nga sa lahat, bigay lahat. Lahat ng pangangailangan, sige, bigay lahat. Puno lahat ng material na possessions. Lahat ng gusto, sige, bigay. Pero ang nakakalungkot, nakakaligtaan ito. O ano nangyari? Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin nakatapos. Relationship-wise, ganun din. Walang firmness. Pabago-bago, papalit-palit. Magpapakasal, maya-maya, hindi naman pala buo. Pumapasok sa isang sitwasyon, magkakaanak, nag-live in, maya-maya, hindi naman buo. Pagkatapos, wala na. We're just putting ourselves in a very complicated situation. Kaya ito yung mag magandang hamon sa atin. Tinutumbok ni Jesus kung ano talaga ang nandito. And this is a challenge for all of us. Kumusta ba ang buhay mo ngayon? Ano bang estado meron ka ngayon? Kung ano man meron ka, marahil it's time to question ourselves, kumusta ba to? Kung anong estado ka ngayon, ramdam mo ba ang halaga ng ginagawa mo? Andun ba yung firm conviction? Kasi kapag mahina ito, kapag shaky, doubtful yung motivation mo, nako, isang kalabit lang ng demonyo ay bagsak ka na agad. Isang kalabit lang ng temptasyon ay nako, sira ang lahat. Kaya magandang paalala uli, paulit-ulit kung sinasabi, basic ang tinutumbok ng ating ibanghelyo. It's all about motivation. Jesus is trying to challenge us to ask us once again, how is your motivation in all everything that you do? Because motivation matters a lot. If there is something that this motivation will give us, it's about the meaning. And if you have the meaning with you in everything that you do, that's the time you will see happiness. You will see fulfillment. Kahit simpleng buhay lang. Kahit sabihin natin, minsan gipit, minsan wala talaga. Pero kapag buo ito, mas masaya ang buhay. Nakakita ba kayo ng mga taong sagana? Saganang sagana? Almost everyday na lang may pinupost sa Facebook. Bago ito, bago na naman ito. Unboxing nito, unboxing ito. Punta dito, punta doon. Seemingly masaya. Pag nasa Facebook, nangiti. Lahat ang ganda-ganda nangiti. Everyday ba, iba-iba pa ang kulay ng labi. Iba-iba pa ang kulay ng buhok. Pero pag dito, mahina yan. Walang patutunguhan yan. Di bali ng simple ang buhay. Sige lang. May pagsubok, sige lang. Tibayan mo lang to. Minsan sinasaktan, nasasaktan, lumuluha, sige lang. Keep that strong. Keep this one firm. Sige lang. Hayaan mo lang si Kristo nandito. Minsan, pinagkakaisahan, Sinasaktan, sige lang. Huwag mong tanggalin ang Diyos sa puso mo. Keep God always in your heart. Sige lang. Di bali ng simpleng buhay. Ang mahalaga, may halaga ang estado mo sa buhay. At dito ka, mas maging masaya at may mapayapang kalooban. We all stand.
All together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and was Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the church, eternal Father, to your Son, you enable us to carry our cross and become your faithful disciples. Shine your face upon us and help us understand your wisdom as we pray. Father, teach us your ways. Father, teach us your ways. For the church, may Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and us, to lay faithful, align our will to your will in our discernment and service toward each other and all people of good will, we pray. Father, teach us your ways. For all who serve in the government, guide them that they may always choose the path of discipleship in the policies they make and their compassionate implementation of the Constitution, we pray. Father, teach us your ways. For many of us gathered today who are undergoing great difficulties, may we find consolation in the presence of the people we love. Move the people we encounter towards providing necessary help that all of us may be empowered towards discipleship, we pray. Father, teach us your ways. For our departed loved ones, welcome them back into your loving arms, especially those who have remained faithful disciples to you in their lifetime here on earth, we pray. Father, teach us your ways. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. Let's spend a few moments of silence as we open with an open heart. We offer all our needs while seeking for the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa. Almighty Father, direct we beseech you all our decisions and actions so that like your Son, we may remain faithful in loving obedience to your eternal will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that the people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body and crown of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company of the choirs of heaven, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, of fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take these, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all.
Let us pray. We all stand. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom none nourish and endow with life to the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, the way we merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Dear devotees of Our Lady of Manawag, the October Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on October 2, 2022. We invite you to participate in our Novena Masses, which will start from September 23 to October 1, 2022. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses, you may fill out a form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation, where you will be provided with an acknowledgement receipt. Or you may visit our website, www.manawagminorbasilica.org, for the online PAMISA. All names of donors and sponsors will appear in the electronic souvenir program. Thank you very much for your continued support. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our masses ended, we go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer for the blessing of the sick. Alalahanin po natin ating mga mahal sa buhay din na may may sakit sa ating mga tahanan. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support and our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ngayon naman po sa mga religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Mother, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may all your religious articles, rosaries, images, and candles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.